The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day after the market close. Tom takes your phone calls from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time using the data available at that time. Let's get a Brandon in Tampa, Florida. Hey, Brandon, what's going on? Hi, Tom. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Sure. Thanks for calling. Thanks for holding, man. Thanks, buddy. Uh, I've been uh, listening to your show for over 16 years. I'm a very loyal listener to you, and I appreciate for all the education and everything you have to offer us. Well, I really appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. Thanks so much, man. Uh, I have hardly ever uh, missed your show. I'm, I'm there, and I want to again thank you so much. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Well, welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go nine hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone have a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Let's take a look at one of our four agreements. Accept others the way they are. You cannot change other people. To try to change them to fit what you want them to be like is trying to change a dog into a cat or a cat into a horse. They are what they are, and you are what you are. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow Industrials up by 42, NASDAQ down one and a half, SP's flat, gold contract up $7.30, trading at 1,582 an ounce. Silver up 41 cents at $29 and one penny an ounce. Platinum flat at 1,588 an ounce. Copper. Uh, $3.50 a pound. Light sweet crude down 37 cents, trading out at $90.45 a bar barrel. Bonds down 29 ticks at 142.24. King Dollar up 383 ticks at 82.53. She's making her way up to that 84 and a quarter. Euro down 61 ticks at 129.91. And the yen up 78, trading out at 94.07. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? You have a flat market. You did uh, $650 million versus six eighty two. dollars um, If we take a look at the SPY and you want to look at that correlation, the correlation is pretty intense, folks. Then the correlation on a monthly correlation, it absolutely does not have the juice, number one, um, you know, to basically stay at these levels. And what I'm talking about specifically is this. At 2007 highs, what we had, we had 3.5 billion at the first high at 156. That was in July of 07. And, but I'm going to come back to July of 07 because there's a, there's a statistic out this morning that's pretty incredible also. So July of 07 was the first high. We had hit a high out there with 156. Uh, August, tough time. We went from 156 all the way back down to 137. Bingo. Croaked, right? Well, guess what? Market goes all the way back up. It tests the 156. We did that with 3.8 billion. So you can take 3.8 billion at the high. You can 3.9 billion. Well, you know what, folks? We're pushing it to that high with 2.5 billion. That's the first part. Second part gets really intriguing, and this is what it is. And this is what amazes me about history in general. And, and you've heard this a thousand times. For some reason, people always like buying highs versus buying lows or buying in the middle. And they always love being on margin at highs. Well, the margin numbers, folks, you know, came out last night. The margin numbers, so check this out. The margin numbers for January went up 10%. The margin numbers right now are as high as they were at the high of the market in July of 2007. It just never fails. You know, when people think they're not going to leverage up, they leverage up. What does that mean? Well, that's a, that would be, it's not divergence, but it would be a contrary type of view that when the leverage is up, when you're at the high, and the last 10% gets pushed in right there, let me tell you something. It just, you get the gist of it. My, my take is that, number one, it doesn't have the strength up here. Number two, you're going to see a turn. Dow Industrials, Dow's at the high. No, no two ways about that. I mean, take a look at the Dow uh, bottom line. Is that uh, up 42 bucks? You know, you have six new stocks in the Dow in seven years. You know, and and by the way, uh, if you want to see what the the biggest mover in the Dow was, um, it's all about the housing market. Home Depot. Home Depot is the biggest mover uh, in the Dow. Uh, the Chevron, which wasn't in the Dow, by the way, Chevron replaced 
uh, AIG. Chevron wasn't in the Dow. Chevron replaced AIG, and Chevron was up there with one of the top weighting structures that pushed the Dow to a high also. Now, NASDAQ Composite. We go over to the Composite. We take a look at the Composite. Composite, flat market. You're at uh, 3222. Uh, two. We did 1.7 billion versus 1.8. Uh, the NDX 100, inside the NDX 100, now this is where it's going to get interesting, and this is why. Uh, the leader inside the NDX 100 today was a gold stock, and we've talked about Wrangell Resources quite a bit because it's a sleeper. There's a sleeper in the, in the fact that Wrangell is a large weighting inside the NDX 100, whereas it's been going down, it's been dragging it down. Uh, bottom line is that Wrangell today came off that bottom, was up $2.94, and what that was doing, that was putting strength inside the NDX 100. Now, let's go over and we take a look at the gold market. And we had with gold out here is this. The actual physical gold didn't do much. We uh, flat market up six bucks. The equities, however, what the equities did is that they had price spread. Um, they had w volume. Uh, we'll see if they can basically get up to this uh, swing point that was up there. If, if we look at uh, an, e an Eco Eagle, an Eco Eagle hit a low of 37 bucks, closed at 40. Uh, when you bring this back, now what you're going to see here is that you are into the high volume low, well, the high volume bars from uh, 2008. You know, but bottom line is that uh, you know those uh, equities today did move higher, uh, had strength in them. You know, we'll see whether we get any follow through. The, as far as I'm concerned, those things got to prove themselves big time. And when I say prove themselves, it means that. Uh, you'll get that pullback. Will the pullback be on lighter volume? Uh, the last ex ex you know, acceleration up here, uh, what you had, if we uh, take a look at it, you had the XAU. Um, you know, folks thought it was a low at the 134. Goes all the way uh, up to 140, six bucks, which wasn't bad. And then, bah, boom. Then comes all the way back down to 128. And the key uh, before you jump is to make sure that uh, let that retracement take place and see if it, number one, it holds, and is it on lighter volume. Let's get our Dave in Clearwater. Hey, Dave, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how in the world have you been? I've been great, man. How you doing? Good? I am doing well. I am doing well. Thank you for uh, for taking my call. Absolutely. So we're going to look at uh, X, XL Maritime, okay? Uh, this is a dry bulk carrier, folks. The low for the year is $0.36, cents, the high is two twenty nine. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Be uh, be really sweet if these things come off. Okay, so I see what you're looking at. Okay, so what you have, folks, is this. Let me pull this back a little and see what we got. So I'll put it on a two-year weekly first. Okay, so we know we're building a nice bottom here, man. And yeah, can it go to seventy-six cents? Yeah, ASAP. So what you have here, folks, is this. This the, all these shippers. I'm going to pull up a few more, but if we go back to June of 2012. It's pretty amazing. We're going to be in June of 2013 before we know it, man. <laughs> That's crazy. So it's been, it's been building a base for a year. Uh, first pop got into a price point of 89 cents. Uh, you had the volume on a monthly was 7 million. Uh, weekly, 7 million. You pull back in four. Uh, had the volume again uh, on January as it went up to uh, 78 again. You did 9 million and you pull back in four. Now, do you own this right now? Or are you looking to buy it, Dave? I'm looking to buy it. And... Uh for the most part, you know, going back to the daily, you know, we had a very, very nice uh, sign of strength. Um, hang on, let me get the screen here in front of me. Bear with me, please. Sorry. Yeah, January uh, 4th. Nice sign of, yeah, on January 4th, I mean, right. huge volume, 4.4, you know, 4.5 million time. shares. Yeah. Starts to pull down, does a buy garly, you know, goes all the way down to, uh, you know, approximately like 47 cents. Yes. Another nice sign of strength on the 28th. But at that point in time, it looks like it just... Although we had a real nice sign of strength today, um, this seems like it can't seem to hold higher price. Looks like it's probably going to base for a little while. What do you think? You know, okay, so watch this, folks. The, what Dave's talking about now, you have the sign of strength. There's wide price per accelerated volume. You go, you go higher. As you pull back, the it didn't hold price, but it had absolutely zero volume. Um, I like what it looks like, and this is why. So there's two different things that happens. You know, inside time in the trade, that's how it should operate. But I've traded these plenty of times. Now, I haven't traded them probably three, four, or five years right now. But this is how they like to trade. And what happens with the shippers is that then it comes out of nowhere, Dave, right? And then you get the spike, whether it's 50 cents, 60 cents, 70 cents. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, sure. Let me pull up dries for a second. Because I, I had, last time this happened, 
when this is down and dries. Dries is operating the same way, and I remember it was like six weeks before it would move, and it did the dries same looks, thing, and then all of a like sudden... Dries is ABC and down at the moment. And it just took off. Well, if, if AB, if it's... No, no, that's, that's not, that's not, that's... I see the way looking at that. No, I see they're looking at it. Okay, no, it's, well... It's certainly not, uh, what you have with dries, folks, is that it came down hard in, in November. It goes up in, you know, let's see what Eagle looks like, E-G-L-E. Because see, what you want to do when you trade these, yes, the Eagle looks all right. When you trade these, okay, so when I'm looking at Eagle, and, and all these are dry bulkers, folks, I would, I would wait on EXM, and this is why. Um, Eagle's not ready yet either. E Eagle looks to me like when it gets, Eagle's at 218. You get down to that 178 again, it's going to be ready. I think these, are, I, I think these just, just about ready though. That's what it looks like, man. I'm going to hit you up with another one after the break. Absolutely, stay right there. Summer Bryce is TFN. You stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. <laughs>